Judy Kadick, Kadick, Kadick. Uh, Teacher Illinois Education Association, uh, a Memorial Junior High, uh, Junior High School in Lansing, Illinois. Chairman Miller and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about the urgent needs need to address our nation's public school infrastructure. I began my teaching career 19 years ago, and I have spent the last 17 years teaching math to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders at Memorial Junior High in Lansing, Illinois. For years, Lansing was a solid blue-collar middle-class suburb, many of whose residents worked in the area steel mills. With the decline of the area manufacturing jobs, we have seen an increase in the number of students from low-income families. Four years ago, our student enrollment was approximately 700, but rapid and significant increases have resulted in a cur current enrollment approaching 950. As a result, we have faced problems of overcrowding and outdated school facilities. In my experience and the experience of my colleagues, school modernization enhances student learning in many ways. For example, it addresses concerns for overcrowding. It allows educators to plan an environment more conducive to curriculum education, integration, engaged learning, and technology integration. Builds, infra builds the infrastructure to support and meet the need, the demands of modern technology addresses safety and environmental concerns brought about from aging structures which used unsafe materials such as asbestos. Improves student and staff morale by establishing learning communities instead of isolated classrooms in a long hallway. Adds to property values thereby improving the community. Improves the offering of extracurricular activities for students giving them a constructive avenue for learning through teaming and physical accomplishments improves the environment for offering after-school learning activities to meet the needs of the community, such as tutoring services and clubs. I have seen these principles at work in my school. The original section of our building was built in 1945, and there were three subsequent additions. The aging condition of the building presented our teachers with many challenges. While the district was able to purchase new technology with grant money, it was difficult to use three computers, a printer, and a television hookup for demonstration with only two outlets in each classroom. Our school board, anticipating an increase in enrollment and considering the limitations of the building, decided to build a new facility. The building is being constructed in phases with the sixth grade wing being completed in December 2006 and the seventh and eighth grades expected to be completed this year. Our enrollment increased so rapidly that the district had to hire seven additional teachers before any of the new rooms were ready. This meant the teachers had to travel from one room to another rather than having their own space. Our average sixth grade class size in 2006 was 36 and 3 tenths. In 2007, it was 29 and 7 tenths, and this year we are back above 30. Had we not built the new building with additional classrooms, our average class size would now be 39 students. We have seen an immediate positive impact now that our sixth graders have moved to the new building. Hallways in the old building were so narrow and crowded that it was difficult to navigate from one classroom to another, especially if you were a tiny sixth grader trying to get through the eighth graders. There were frequent fights as students pushed and shoved or accidentally bumped into each other and tempers flared. Teachers often could not see incidents where adult intervention may have prevented bullying or harassment. In the new building, there is ample room for students to move freely, and teachers can more easily supervise behavior. The new classrooms have great lighting, new furniture, whiteboards, sufficient outlets space so that teachers and staff are not tripping over multiple extension cords. Our old building had carpeting in the special education classrooms and the sewers backed up numerous times, flooding those rooms. Many of our students and staff have asthma and allergies that were exacerbated by the conditions in those classrooms. They are all breathing easier in the new building. As we walk from the old building into the new building, it is like walking from a cave into sunlight. Adults and children alike have commented on how stressful it feels in the old building and how calm and safe it feels in the new one. We are fortunate to have these new facilities available to us, but so many schools across the nation are not so lucky. My written testimony outlines the national problem we are facing in ensuring safe, modern school facilities for every child, 
which my personal experiences clearly il illustrate the necessity for. Simply put, America's schools are, desperate, are in desperate need of repair and renovation, and the research is clear. School conditions impact student learning. Ensuring all of our nation's students access to safe, modern schools that are not overcrowded requires a significant federal investment. Federal assistance is particularly needed to ensure targeting of resources to communities, communities with the greatest needs. NEA strongly urges Congress to help meet these needs by creating a federal school renovation grant program targeted to communities that have struggled to fund needed repairs. We support the Public School Repair and Renovation Act introduced by Representative Lobsack and Senator Harkin and the 21st Century High Performing Public School Facilities Act introduced by Representative Chandler. We also support legislation to provide tax credits for bonds for school modernization and new construction projects nationwide, such as the America's Better Classroom Act introduced by House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Rangel and Representatives Ramstead and Etheridge. And we support the School Building Enhancement Act introduced by Representative Holt. This bill would authorize grants to help schools become more energy efficient. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I would be happy to answer any questions.